So last night, the president made an announcement. Cusco is one of the places where lockdown is basically over. Look at these street sellers, a ton of them are selling these masks. Lockdown is over. We're Alex and Lindsay. We're two travelers who are exploring South America. Suddenly, a strict lockdown began in Peru, and we've been stuck ever since. Along the way, we took in a stray dog, and he hasn't left our side. It's been months, and we're still here, so we're documenting the whole experience and sharing it with you. And I haven't had my hair cut in six months, so I need an appointment for today. We'll see how this goes. You guys like our new masks? We got a few more of these that you guys love so much. <laughs> so we thought we would tell you guys a little bit about the new rules now that lockdown is over. Okay, there's kind no of. people around, so we can do this. All right, so last night the president made an announcement that the state of emergency would be extended until July 30th. However, the actual lockdown in most regions is not going to be extended. So we're lucky because Cusco is one of the places where lockdown is basically over, but still it's going in the country and other places. So we think we will be able to travel around the area now, which means maybe we'll be able to go to Sacred Valley, places like that but it's still a little bit unsure. We still have a lot of questions. Like, are bars gonna be opening? Like, is literally <laughs> everything opening up and Lindsay's, there's no restrictions? No, Lindsay's first <laughs> question, are the bars gonna be open? <laughs> I don't need to go to the bar. <laughs> it's more just like a curiosity. And also they haven't really made it clear if we can travel domestically in between the cities that no longer have lockdown restrictions. So there's still a lot of things kind of up in the air but we can go on hikes now and not get yelled at. So it's no longer a rule that you can only go out for the essentials, like to pharmacies and for food. So now we're just gonna be able to roam around Cusco, supposedly, and mm -hmm. do what we want, uh, at least in this city, and not get in trouble. So that's amazing. We'll be able to try new food, hopefully go to some restaurants. We don't know if we're gonna be able to dine in in these restaurants still. I would imagine we would since they said all restrictions are lifted. So we really don't know how it's gonna go, but this is really cool because everything is about to change. Yeah. And we're gonna show you guys all of it. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> ah, yeah guys, so as much as we have not liked lockdown, being locked down at home, not able to do anything, it's a little sad to think about that we're not gonna see Cusco like we've been seeing it for the last few months without people and areas like Sacsayhuaman, the touristy areas, they're probably gonna have a ton of people now. All right, so if you watch this channel, you've probably seen this stuff before, but I love showing you guys this area where we're about to go. So many people, even during lockdown, interesting how many people are out and all the things they're selling back here and then look at these cellophane walls that they made just because of covid in these pharmacies it's been interesting being on lockdown in a city like Cusco which is one of the most touristy cities in the world. So we've seen it in a way that people really never have before. Part of me is really gonna miss all of this. The sanitizing stations outside of every store, the different rows on the bus where you can't sit. No people anywhere unless you go to these markets where people need to go to get their food. The police presence everywhere. The empty abandoned streets. It's just something that we're never gonna see again in this city and many others that went through this. So I've been taking some photos, doing a little of photography while we've been here in Cusco, all about this quarantine. And so 
I wanted to show you some of my favorite photos from the last few months. So take a look at this. This is the Cusco quarantine in photos. What do you guys think of the photography? So as we walk along this street, I'm gonna show you all of these stores. They were closed just a couple weeks ago. And then last week, just a fraction of them were open. And now almost everything is open. So things have changed faster than we could have guessed. Then, open look at these street sellers a ton of them are selling these masks almost everybody it seems that's the business to get into right now and of course there weren't people selling masks before all of this a year ago so that's just interesting how everyone got into the business of the time that's going to help them the most all the clothing stores and pretty much every store they're selling masks now and the full body suits that you can wear, the COVID suits. I know I said it in the last video, but the innovation here is awesome. A lot of these stores, they haven't been able to sell what they typically sell. <laughs> Thank God for these waters that are on the street for these dogs. They help out so much. It's actually something that we're looking into doing pretty soon, is making our own. And that is something that we're going to be doing with the GoFundMe money. So guys, lockdown is over. Oh wait, we actually still need these. So we think we're actually still required to wear these masks, even though restrictions have lifted. So we're going to talk about a few more things. Let's go take a seat. So we're going to tell you a little bit more about this lockdown lifting. So curfew has changed. It's now 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. You can't go out before it was earlier. So we have a few more hours every day that we can go out. That doesn't really change much for us at all. Um, and now we are allowed to go out on Sundays for the first time, which is amazing. We like that because earlier in the lockdown on Saturdays, we would have to stock up on food because we didn't want to have to cook on Sunday or we couldn't go grocery shopping. So oftentimes Alex and I would order two delivery meals and we felt really <laughs> funny about it. We'd get like this huge pizza and then two burgers and we'd have one of the meals fresh and ready and the other one is for the next day on Sunday. Now we don't have to do that. So we know that the pandemic isn't exactly over, so we're gonna be as smart about it as possible. We can't just do anything now, and we know that it could come back just as easily. There could be a second wave. 
So we are excited about this lockdown lifting, but we're not getting our hopes up that we're in the clear yet. So if some of you are wondering, we still cannot get home because the borders are still closed. The president announced the state of emergency until the end of July, so that means no flying home. So we don't know how long we're gonna be here. We're just gonna make the best of it because we have no idea how long it's gonna be. Oh yeah, and Lindsay was gonna tell you about her day to day and she got a few things done and I think it was super cheap yeah. here in Peru. Way cheaper in Peru to get stuff done than back in the US. That goes for a lot of things, food, beauty stuff, just anything really. But I got my hair cut and it was $9 and usually back home you could pay anywhere from like $30 to $50 for a woman's haircut. And I got a pedicure for $9 as well. So that was pretty cool because again, back home that would be like three times or four times the cost. So it was a good day. I hadn't had my hair cut in six months, so it felt good. <laughs> And Alex is not getting haircuts. He's growing his hair out. Yeah, as you can tell. Yeah. All right, next order of business. You guys have been asking for it. We're going to do a live pretty soon. What day do you think we're going to do it? Mm, Wednesday? Possibly Wednesday. Leave a comment below. Let us know what day is good for you. But we're going to do Lockdown is Over Live. And we'll spend an hour with you guys, hour and a half, talking to you guys like we have on the other ones. If you're new here, you might not have ever seen one of our lives before. But you can grab a drink, grab some food, and just hang out with us, ask us questions. And it's pretty fun. So last time we tried to go live, we were a little bit unsuccessful. It only worked for like five minutes, and then the internet was spotty. We've moved to a new Airbnb. We have since moved to a new Airbnb, so we're hoping this will be better. Up on this patio, we get decent Wi-Fi most of the time, so we're gonna try it out. So come join us, we can celebrate lockdown being over with in Cusco. <laughs> in the next video, we will give you the exact time and date and everything. We are going to attempt to put Mr. Potato Head's paw print on the postcards for you guys. We'll see how well he does with this. We have the ink pad here. Let's do it. You ready for an art project? Look how cooperative he is with this whole process. <laughs> Are you <laughs> he doesn't it? care at all. Yeah. Hey guys. <laughs> Ready? Yep. All right, potato. Let's do this. Uh, one, two, three. Ooh, beautiful. Good job, buddy. So guys, for the Patreon, we're making about 50 of these. Limited edition <laughs> Mr. Potato Head's paw print Patreon cards. So if you want one of these with Mr. Potato Head's print on there, make sure you join the Patreon pretty soon. For those of you who don't know what Patreon is, it's a way that you can support artists, YouTube channels, musicians, things like that. So, so you can choose how much you give, but there are different tiers. And if you give a few dollars a month, then you get a postcard like this from when we're traveling around the world. Typically, I'll be drawing on these because I'm a bit of an artist and Lindsay will write something on there. But for now, because we have Potato Head, <laughs> if you're a Potato Head fan, this is the only time that you can get one of these. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow, you can see all the details of his little paw pad on there. Wow. Hola muchachos. <laughs> so right now, we're having a little bit of wine and we are writing on your postcards. So we got a ton of these paw prints for Mr. Potato Head for all of you who are a fan of Mr. Potato Head, which is everybody. And we're writing all of them out, putting your addresses on here and getting some of these done. So. As you can see, we have a ton of different postcards from all over Peru, mostly Cusco, since we've been stuck here. And the post office isn't working right now. We can't send mail at the moment, but we're going to send all of these as soon as we can. So if you want a paw print from Mr. Potato Head, now's the time to do it. And we'll write something on there for you and send these out to you soon. We're just having a nice little chill night doing this, having some fun, listening to music. We got some wine and some lights. String lights. And a view of the city. Perfect. 
Oh, and really quick, we want to shout out all of our patrons. You guys are awesome. Everyone who wants to join the Patreon, there's a link below. We're going to be sending you the postcards and souvenirs and everything else very soon, just as soon as mail and post offices open up again. So hopefully that'll be soon. But uh, yeah, these are all the patrons, the current patrons. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, let's get into the Q&A. First, we have one from Elia Mazala. I'm observing that you always wear leather shoes, Alex, whenever you go trekking or walking down. I usually see people wearing sports shoes. Don't you agree they're more comfortable? Even Lindsay never wears sh sports shoes. Why are you both allergic of it? I want to know. So I get a lot of crap for this. <laughs> I have my whole life, but I really, I don't believe much in uh, shoes that are made for specific things. <laughs> so I pretty much wear boots or leather shoes as, uh, as they said, um, for everything. And I like it. I think all you need is some rubber, or some leather below your foot so that you don't get cut. I don't think you need anything more than that. Do you guys think he'll still be saying this after a five-day trek to Machu Picchu? I think so. I don't know. Yet to be determined. <sighs> but yeah, he... Well, I like to do this too. It's good to travel light and to pack items that are versatile. So with his leather shoes, he can wear those to dress up, to be casual, to go on hikes. So it works. Yeah, it took me a long time to find the shoes that I wear. They're made for every occasion. And that is why I travel with them instead of traveling with multiple pairs of shoes. And I did bring sports shoes, but mine are black. So I can kind of wear them with anything throughout the day too, even if I'm not hiking. Yeah, but my theory is shoes are just a foot covering. <laughs> you don't really need anything special. Next one comes from Magic Stardust. Asks, when is Alex's birthday? If it is soon, he might be spending it in Cusco. Yeah, so that is very possible. His birthday is October 14th, so I might be returning the favor and throwing him a birthday in Cusco. We'll <laughs> see if I can match up to his standards. He threw me a pretty nice birthday, but yeah. We could be here till October. Next one comes from CC Suzralski. Can you raise another GoFundMe for that woman that shelters 25 dogs in her house? He's referring to Mila. She is the head of an organization that we've been working with to help stray dogs. We will link to her stuff below. So she has a Facebook page. I believe they have a website as well. And if you go to those and contact her there, I'm sure there are ways that you could contribute to what she's doing and help her out because they're doing awesome yeah. things. Yeah, she's she amazing. Is doing awesome she things. has a huge heart for animals. So your money will be going to a trusted, safe place. The organization is called Cusco Protection de Animales, and you can search that on Facebook and Google, and it'll pop up. Uh, also, if you guys do want to continue to help out Stray Dogs, we are going to leave the Potato Head GoFundMe page open if you guys want to donate to that. And a lot of that will be going to her <laughs> and her organization, so that is an easy way to do it. So if you didn't see the video, actually there's two videos now where we helped Stray Dogs with her and with her organization. So if you didn't see those ones, you could view those, but what we did with some of our GoFundMe money is we helped spay and neuter some dogs. We helped get big bags of food for the, uh, mm -hmm. for the, for the shelter, for the shelter. And we helped pay for some vaccines for the dogs. For so puppies. <laughs> there's a lot of dogs in need here. So if you guys want to give, that would be awesome. You guys have already been amazing. A lot of you have thanked us for what we've done for the dogs, but really I feel like we should be thanking you because if it weren't for you, we wouldn't be able to do it. Mm -hmm. We're really just the hands and feet, but you guys financially funded it. So thank you to you. Yeah. The Love Pug asks, Lindsay, how do you keep your weight down? I have a sweet tooth too. I gained five pounds just looking at those delicious cakes. Yeah, uh, we don't have a scale here, so I don't know if I've gained weight, but a lot of you guys have been asking about our weight, probably because we show you a lot of good foods, and for the most part, we do pretty much eat whatever we want whenever we feel like it. Um, yeah, we don't even try to diet or anything. We like to eat healthy foods when we can, but we also like to try a lot of foods. Yeah. And yeah, we don't really try too hard to keep <laughs> our weight down. For me, it's actually hard for me to keep my weight <laughs> no matter what i eat what a problem i usually i know i usually lose weight 
if I eat just like anyone else does. So I actually have a problem with being too skinny usually. So and I usually just yeah. have, I've been like the same weight since high school. So I just stay the same way. Next one is from Oviance La Rose says, what South American countries have both of you guys visited together before COVID-19 lockdown? So we only went to Colombia before we got to Peru. We had a whole South America trip planned mm -hmm. before this whole pandemic started and the lockdown happened. Uh, so we were planning on going to a lot more, but we first traveled together to Mexico, then to Colombia, then to Peru. And if you wanna see that story, I will link the video right here so you can click on that and see what happened <laughs> we also do have some colombia and peru videos being saved up until we're ready to release them until after lockdown has ended which i guess technically it has yeah so maybe pretty soon we'll be <laughs> yeah. putting out colombia videos and the other peru travel videos before we went on lockdown mm -hmm. so stay tuned for that Next one is from Anna Kelly asking, how do you guys withdraw money? Do you use ATMs and are banks easy to find there? I really enjoy your channel. Yeah, pretty much we use ATMs. So I'm pretty passionate about uh, credit cards or cards, ATM cards, debit cards when you travel, all the types of cards. <laughs> so I have kind of a trifecta of these cards that I use that save you money while you're traveling. So I have a Charles Schwab card, which saves you ATM fees, which usually you pay these fees if you travel abroad. And then I also have a credit card where I don't pay any foreign transaction fees. So I can use that anywhere and no fees. And that's the Chase Sapphire that doesn't do any international fees. So yeah. So if you go to my Alexander Travel Bum channel, I actually talk about this a bit. I have a lot of tips videos, how to videos over there. I talk about these cards, but I'm going to make a dedicated video about it very soon, which I will link here when I have it. All right. Next one comes from Mark Keller asking when you eventually leave your lockdown area, what will you miss most about Cusco? Me personally, I'm going to miss the energy that Cusco has. It's not a tangible thing, but you can feel it. It's positive. It's it's vibrant. the belly. It's the belly button of the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the energy of the belly button. It's a real thing. All right, guys, we're switching the phone because the uh, battery on the camera just uh, died. So uh, I'm going to miss the beautiful streets, the mountains, the landscape, just the serene mm -hmm. nature of the city especially during lockdown. It's just been very peaceful. We actually don't know Cusco before the lockdown when it had more of the energy of the people everywhere and mm -hmm. all that. So I think Lindsay was talking about kind of a different energy yeah. that you feel more so than like tourists everywhere. Yeah. Um, There's going to be a lot to miss about Cusco. The food is good. It's a beautiful city. The cobblestone streets and everything just walking around mm -hmm. it's all and it's just an amazing city it's special the last one is from nick thomas he says what happens to the dogs when you leave and have started something something without an end what's next an official travel bum animal support project charity yeah so what's cool is so potato head started this whole thing you guys helped us with the gofundme First, we just wanted to find Potato at a home, and then it turned into something bigger mm -hmm. because you guys gave extra. We were able to help with this organization, help animals. But something that I wanted to do during my travels, and Lindsay said before she met me, she wanted to somehow help people, somehow help while traveling. Mm -hmm. We both had a passion for that, and I wanted to somehow start an orga organization or something, if possible, once we had an audience that would want to be a part of it. So it would be really cool if we could continue this somehow and help animals in every country that we travel to. We'll be kicking around ideas and see if it's possible to start some kind of organization of our own that'll help further. Yeah, I think that the more that we help stray dogs, we don't want to see this end because there is such a need. So we want to be able to keep it going. It's kind of funny because Potato Head is the whole inspiration behind this whole thing, pretty much. And he has no idea. He's <laughs> just the coolest Potato Head. We were just talking about that. And that's just so funny. Like we're drawing pictures of him. We're selling merch with his people on the other side of the world now have Potato Head's head on their shirt and they're walking around with it. And he will never have any idea. No awareness of it. He's a semi-famous dog. Yeah. <laughs> but he's done um, great things for Cusco. 
But one more thing, the Cusco Protección de Animales, the organization we've been working with, they named the project the Mr. Potato Head Project, which is supposed to be ongoing. Mm -hmm. So that in itself is something that will continue after we leave. All right, guys, that's the end of this video. Be sure to like this video down below. It always helps us out, and you guys are really good about that, so thank you. Also, continue leaving comments below. We love reading them, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're going to be posting more videos like this every other day, so check them out. At 12.34. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, four, Peru one. time. So for all of the new people here that don't know that, always be here at 12.34 Peru time, <laughs> ready for our video every other day. And uh, we will see you in the next video. Bye. Hey guys, we can only do so much on YouTube and we only put out a video every two or three days. So if you want more, if you want daily stuff, you should head to Instagram, find us at Alexander Travel Bum. And that's where you'll find daily stories and photos about our travels. Hey, thanks for making it all the way through this video. If you want to watch more, click one of these videos. Subscribe because I'm traveling all around the world and I'm sharing the whole thing with you. Thanks.